Hello, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Night Talks, the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications talk show produced by students for students. My name is Ethan Goddard and I'll be the host today. I'm a junior here at the university studying media production and I'm very excited to introduce to you our guest, Ron Allen, a distinguished NBC News correspondent for over 25 years based out of New York. Hi, Ron. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, I'd like to get right into the questions because I'm very excited to interview you. So what initially drew you towards the field of reporting? Was it your dream job from young? No, it's not anything I ever thought of until after college when I couldn't find a job with a political science degree. <laughs> and I uh, <clears throat> always was interested in current events and social science and politics and, and writing and current events. And I happened to get a job uh, a part-time job at CBS News in their newsroom during an election cycle when they tend to hire part-time temporary workers. And I got a job in a newsroom as a, a, essentially a clerk around the newsroom doing pretty basic things, <laughs> answering the phone, delivering mail. And uh, it introduced me to the world of news. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. It's, and so, and that's how I became interested in journalism and being a reporter and, and as they say, the rest is history. Oh, okay, so it was more just the chance of getting that first job. It was frankly desperation to find a job. <laughs> and uh, yes, I thought like, studying politics and political science, I, I have a undergrad and a graduate degree in political science. I thought I would work on policy. I thought I'd work in Washington. I thought I'd do that kind of government, maybe civil service work. Right. Um, but looking for a job after college didn't work out. It, it really didn't, it worked, didn't work out. And I happened to find this opportunity at a, a job fair that was hosted by the National Urban League, which is probably, it's a great organization, um, but a lot of people don't find jobs at job fairs. It's usually a first step, but I actually did. Um, I got an interview, the job was, um, part-time, working midnight to eight, oh, wow. weekends only. Um, and for me, it was a humbling experience to accept a job like that, just out of college and with high hopes and expectations. And I remember my, my father told me, take the job. Mm -hmm. It's CBS, it's, it's a great opportunity, you'll, you'll advance. And I thought, oh my God, this is embarrassing. Midnight to eight, part-time, my friends are doing so much better than I. And, uh, but it, it, he, he was right and it, it, it worked out. I went from one thing to the next to the next. Okay. So um, you're a graduate of the University of Pencil Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. With uh, degrees in political science. Now, what skills did you pick up while getting those degrees that you still use in your job today? Writing, researching, analysis, um, information gathering, breaking down information to its essential components, um, Basically, um, news gathering journalism is social science research on the fly. Very, there's an old saying about how news is the first draft of history. Um, in that regard, the, the skill sets are very similar to what you do as a, in, in a class, uh, studying social science, you know, you write long papers. In, in journalism, you, you write news stories every day mm -hmm. or every few days. So, so it's very similar. It's, it's, it's about um, looking at a situation, analyzing it, learning more about it, and, and communicating to, in the case of a class, your professor, in the case of what I do now, to an audience, what I've learned or what I think is important or what they need to know about a particular topic. Right. So it was less about the specific degree you graduated with and more about the stuff that you were practicing while there. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think generally speaking, it's true that, you know, once you get your first job out of college, 
what you studied, what your degree was, becomes somewhat irrelevant. You know, employers, whether you're in business, medicine, law, journalism, they, they want to know what you can do. Mm -hmm. And they want to know, can you do what we need you to do? Not that whether you got an A or a B or whatever the grade was in psychology two or three years ago at the <laughs> University of Florida. I'm sure yeah. it was a challenging time, but it becomes irrelevant to some extent. From 1988 through to 1992, you were at CBS News as a national correspondent. Uh, how did you get your first break into the industry? Uh, good question. Well, again, going back, uh, I started at CBS as a desk assistant, and that was a long time before the first reporting job. Um, back then, CBS News ran a training program for minorities, women, who they were trying to identify as future reporters. Uh, sort of like NBCU Academy at NBC mm -hmm. Universal, where I work now, um, runs a fellows program. Uh, there's also something called a news associates program. It's basically a, a, tr a training program that's, that tries to identify people who have ability and, it, and you learn. It's, it's a tremendous opportunity. I mean, this is an incredibly competitive business. Um, but I, I got a job as a reporter trainee. I got a job at an affiliated station in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then I moved to Hartford, Connecticut, and then to Boston, and then back to the network. And one, from one market to the next, bigger, bigger, bigger stories, that's how I... I progressed through the business. I worked at CBS, then I worked at ABC, and for the last 20 some odd years I've worked for NBC. Okay, and was it people that you met through your first job that have ended up helping you further down the line? I think, you know, you, you form a network, you form a con contacts, relationships, and they serve you throughout your career. Um, some of the people who I met many, many years ago have retired and moved on to other things. And, but I think it's essential as you're building your career that you maintain good relationships and that you, you not only look for help, but you offer help. Right. It's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a give and take process. You know? um, and there's an old saying in the business about how be, you should be nice to everyone because you never know who's going to be successful. <laughs> you never know who's going to be your boss. Yeah. You may be my boss in 10 years or less. Who knows? How different was it reporting abroad? Were there any unique challenges that came with being uh, international as compared to back home? Yeah, most, most foreign news coverage that you see in America is about war and peace, life and death. It's very intense. You know. The stories that we covered um, were not local stories. In, in this, well, I think there's a big difference between foreign and domestic news. And again, a lot of the stories were about conflict. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stories were about uh, natural disasters, um, they, you know, famine in, in Africa, uh, terrorist attacks here or there, um, covered the, the war in the, the, the war in Bosnia and uh, and Europe and. Kosovo, um, the, the Middle East uh, conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians that's still ongoing. But th those are the kinds of stories that I was drawn to a and I, I traveled a lot. So I, so I traveled a lot in Africa. And, um, and that's a lot different than the kinds of stories you do in domestically. You know, here you do stories about things that are happening in the States. You know, we're very uh, American, the American media is very focused on America. Our politics, our economy, as as it should be, um, our our cultural issues. Um, so it's it's a very different, you know, here in America, in the states, you're covering a community that you're a part of, and there, you're covering uh, uh, countries that you are not a part of. You're it, you're you're more of a. It's a different perspective, mm -hmm. um, but you're trying to explain complicated things to people back in the States that they often don't understand or aren't paying a lot of attention to that are happening in different languages and different cultures. And I, I found all that fascinating and challenging and, and some of the most rewarding uh, experiences of my, my, my career. Can you talk a little bit about what you do for NBC News? I do stories at NBC about everything. I, I, I live in, I'm based in New York and I, um, I, I basically do stories that appear on the NBC Nightly News with Esther Holt, 
the Today Show, M NBC News is also MSNBC, so stories appear on MSNBC. We're now, the, co the company is very much into our new streaming platform, NBC News Now, um, so we do stories for that. And they are stories about everything from the COVID epidemic, of course, was a whole couple of years, I thought, for time. everything is COVID, 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 and, and as, as it should be, because it was such a tremendous experience, such a, a, a traumatic yeah. e experience for all of us. I've covered some political campaigns over the years. I covered the, um, the Hillary Clinton versus Obama campaign back in 2008, which was one of the more fascinating c campaigns that happened. I spent some time covering the White House in, in Washington. You know, for the last number of years, I've covered a lot of social justice stories. A lot of that has to do with the protests and calls for reform, uh, police reform and, and judicial reform in a lot of communities because of things that were happening. Um, uh, it's, it's a little bit of everything. We go out and cover the weather. <laughs> I've covered hurricanes, not here in Florida, but, uh, but other parts of the country. Uh, you know, you name it, you know, consumer stories, business stories, the economy. Wow, um, yeah. It's, you, you, literally, we could be doing a story about just about anything that's, that's in the news. So it's really just the incredible diversity that is, do you think, kept you there for so long? It's certainly interesting, intellectually, the, mm -hmm. the substance that you deal with. The, the process of what you do is also extraordinarily exhilarating to travel all over the country and basically tell stories about what, what, you, what you see and what you find. I've seen some incredible things over, over the years and um, some good, some not so good. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's just been an incredible privilege and opportunity and blessing to be able to, to live that kind of life and get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just talk us through what a typical day would look like for you from the start till you clock out? Short answer is that there really aren't typical days. <laughs> Some of the days are endless. They go on and on and on. It's a lot of, it's a long, um, it's a lot of work and a lot of commitment to, to doing this. It's sort of like being a fireman where you sit around the fire station and then a story breaks and you have to run out and put out the fire and cover, cover the story. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of that that happens. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of trying to sort through information and, and, and process things that are happening in the world. Um, so, you know, it's, every day is a little different. It's, you know, every day is a little bit um, more or less challenging. Um, and, and again, it's just, it's a fascinating way to live your life and live your work um, doing this kind of, just this kind of work. So do you think that any difference in news organizations such as Fox or CNBC has played a, a role in political polarization in this country? I think one of the fundamental challenges in this country is that nowadays there are so many different sources of information. You can go online and you can find news organizations or bloggers or individuals or, or other organizations uh, that are providing information about stuff and issues. Um, and depending upon what your political views are, you can go and find entities that will tell you you're right and tell you support your views and tell you that these are the facts about things. Th there used to be a time when the country could agree on certain facts that that this was this and that was that, and it was pretty clear. Now, there are lots of facts out there that people believe, and there are places online and in the world of media where you can go and listen and have your beliefs about what these facts are or what these theories are reinforced. And so um, I think I always urge viewers and I always urge practitioners, journalists, to expose yourself to a wide range of points of view, to a wide range of sources of information, um, so that you understand what's really going on in the world. And you can make up your opinions or make up your mind based on including a lot of different points of view and perspectives. Um, because 
I think, I think it does create a lot of division, a lot of intensity, a lot of passion in our politics and in our daily lives when we're all sitting in our silos and looking at and listening to certain sets of facts that we believe are true and not, not, being, not, not believing a set of facts over here that challenge that. Yeah. I think we need to challenge ourselves like that. And I think, um, and, and to answer your, you know, your bottom line question, yes, there are media organizations that are less traditional in terms of their journalistic approach. A lot, there, there are some that are more opinionated. So you can consume the opinions, but know that that's what that is. And at the same time, scroll down, click on something else, somewhere else. I was gonna say change the channel, but that sounds so, makes me sound so old. Um, turn the page to, to see a wide range of, you know, there's a, you know, a, 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 something happens, um, but why it happened, how it happened, who saw it happen, you know, th there's a whole lot of different perspectives out there. Mm -hmm. And to be really knowledgeable and informed, I think you need to avail yourself to as wide a range of perspectives as possible. Have you ever felt in danger while covering a story, whether at home, abroad, or after you've published it? Um, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a fair amount of danger out there, especially in foreign reporting, because a lot of the stories you do are about conflict. I, you know, I've been in a lot of war zones around the, the world, and I've been with, I've always been with people who are trained and willing and comp competent to, to, to manage these kinds of situations. I've, you know, I've often, I used to tell my mother, you know, that it always looks worse on TV than it actually is in real life because these situations are manageable. But yes, journalists often put themselves in harm's way. We're not as exposed as the ordinary people who live in the, the place where these things are happening. But yes, you, you, I often found myself in those kinds of situations. Um, you know, I often tell people that wars don't really happen on battlefields. They happen in neighborhoods, they happen in communities, they happen on city streets, they happen in, on farms, they happen, they happen where people live. It's not like armies go out and say, let's go out to this battlefield and fight this out, mm -hmm. you know? And journalists inject themselves in the heart of that. And um, it takes a lot of bravery, it takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of caring about what's going on in that place to do that, to expose yourself in that way. And colleagues of mine who are in Ukraine, for example, which is in the front of the, the front of the news these days, you know, they take incredible chances. They spend incredible amounts of time away from their families, and they do it, I think, because they believe that this is something that's really important. Mm -hmm. That that they literally r risk their lives to tell the world about. And and again, it's these situations though are manageable. We we we. We, we take calculated risks. You know, there are, there are ways to cover a war and ways not to cover a war. There are precautions to take. You know, one of the best things is that you don't get in between two armies, you know? <laughs> the other thing is you stay with the army that you think is gonna win <laughs> um, when possible. You know, we do a lot of reporting in war zones embedded or working with the American military um, and the, the, because the military uh, wants us to wants to show the country what's happening. You know, there's all kinds of political issues around war and conflict, and sometimes, and it's often safest, very safe to be embedded with the military. That also limits what you can see because they only take you to certain places. Mm. I, 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 generally speaking, and when possible, prefer not to be embedded with the military because we try to go where we want to go to see what we want to see, and because we don't always believe what the military is telling us. Um, they, they have their own agenda. I've often been at um, the scene of disasters, earthquakes, the aftermath, where there's still aftershocks. I, I am definitely afraid of earthquakes. <laughs> there, is, there is training, there, is, there are co courses, there's work uh, to prepare people to do this. I mean, the people you see out there covering conflicts and covering, they, they're, they're not just thrown out there, you know, and I personally, will not go out there with somebody who's just thrown out there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and I, I believe mo most of my colleagues feel the same way. 
you know, it's all, it's risk, yes, but it's, it's managed and measured risk. And, and again, you do all this because of what, what's happening in that particular place is extraordinary and you want the world to know and see what, 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 what has happened. And the most dangerous assignments are not when I as an American go to the Middle East to cover a conflict. The most dangerous assignment is that journalist who lives in the Middle East who's covering something happening down the street from them where they live, where their family lives, and they, they don't, when they go home, it's still happening. When I go home, I'm perfectly safe yeah. and, and away from it all. So there's that too. So in countries without a free press, they're obviously taking a far, a far heavier risk. Exactly, yes. We have, in, in this country, we have a free press, we have our First Amendment, we have protections, we have um, civility for the most part. Uh, but there are a lot of places where people don't have those protections, mm -hmm. where people don't have those guarantees. You know, some of the most incredibly brave people you'll ever meet are, are journalists who take on the, the, the leaders of their own countries. And they write their names and they publish their names and, and then sadly, in many cases, some suffer the consequences. Yeah. During the time you've worked in news media, what's the biggest change you've seen take place within the industry? The biggest change I've seen in the world of media, I guess, is the rise of social media. The, the rise of the ability of um, <clears throat> everybody to have a camera, <laughs> everybody to post their video or their stories online, everybody to, um, you know, to say what they want to say. The world used to be smaller. I mean, the, the media landscape used to be smaller. Now there's all sorts of, you know, there used to be three channels. Now there's like a hundred channels, you know? Uh, and um, I think that's the biggest, biggest change. Nowadays, a, a person with a phone can do what it used to take teams of people to accomplish over long periods of time. Mm -hmm. You know, think uh, there was a time when, when the medium was film and a team would go out with a film camera, take pictures of something, come back, process the film, let the film develop, let it dry, <laughs> put it in the mail, send it to someplace. They, they, develop, they, you know, all that can happen in like <coughs> the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. So, the, so the things happen really, really fast. You know, deadlines come really, really fast. Um, there's, a, there's a real, there's a demand for more and more content, more and more stories. Um, and, and so the technology continues to revolutionize the, the business. <clears throat> and I often tell young journalists or aspiring journalists that I think in, in that regard, you have something of an advantage because you're, you're used to dealing with and used to working with technology in a way that older folks like myself are not. <clears throat> and, and that's going to continue to drive how we tell stories, how we gather news, how we produce programs for the foreseeable future. So are you seeing any new trends in reporting, um, such as TikTok, virtual reality, uh, podcasts, or substacks? Yes, and I, um, yes, there, there's constantly new things. Again, this falls into the category of social media, that, that things are, there's a whole new world of information out there. <clears throat> uh, there's, a whole, there's a whole new way of telling stories. Um, the God's honest truth is that this is not something that my, is my strong suit about, <clears throat> I mean, social media is something I'm very, very concerned about because it creates some, um, it creates a proliferation of information, but it also, a lot of that information isn't true, correct. Mm -hmm. It creates the need for a lot of, um, a lot of more fact checking, a lot of more verification. Of, 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 but it also creates more opportunities to reach people. This is where people are. People are on their phones all day. They're not sitting at home at 6.30 in the evening waiting for the news to come on their television, you know. Uh, so many people these days no longer have cable television. Remember, like, cable television used to be the big thing. So uh, the world is constantly changing, and I think as journalists, we have to constantly 
take advantage of these ways to not only gather news, but to distribute news and, and information. And, and so yes, things are constantly changing. And I think we'll continue to change going into the future. Mm -hmm. So lastly, do you have any advice for aspiring journalists? Um, <laughs> I think the best advice I would give someone is to be as knowledgeable about as many things as you possibly can. To know as much as you can about everything. To be always curious. To always have questions. To be open-minded. To, to travel, see the world, read as much as you can. And, <clears throat> and, and to you know, it, it's at another level, it, if you want to be a journalist and you want to get the best of this all, it's a, it's a very, it takes dedication. It's a very competitive business. It's, you, have to, you have to, I think, have a, have a strong sense of, of yourself and trust your own instincts and, because people are going to tell you you're, you're wrong. People are going to tell you you don't know what you're talking about. I think you have to, at some level, learn to trust and and, and not just trust yourself, but trust your teammates that you're out there wor working with. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful and I think important profession, craft, business to be in. And um, I highly recommend it. That's <laughs> all I can say. Well, I think that's great advice, Ron. Um, and your story was amazing. I think that we can all, uh, look at how big the world really is and with the vast amounts of information out there nowadays we'd be doing ourselves a disservice to not um, open our minds a little bit more well it was a pleasure having you on the show ron thank you and i would like to thank you our viewers for joining us at home it was great having you here until next time good night mm -hmm.